Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. You know, today we're going to be doing a deep dive on someone who's basically a walking, talking history of music. We're talking Quincy Jones. This is the man who's worked with more genres, more legends, and honestly, just more hit records than really should be possible for one person. It's not even just the names he's worked with, although, trust me, we'll get to those. It's how this guy went from a childhood in Chicago that was, let's just say, difficult to actually shaping the sound of pop culture. I mean, this is a journey that takes us from some seriously tough beginnings all the way to the heights of musical innovation. Yeah, it's a pretty wild ride. So let's rewind a bit back to the 1930s in Chicago. You gotta try and imagine a young Quincy Jones facing a world that most of us can't really even fathom. A mother who struggled with mental illness, the rough reality of the South Side, it was a lot. But in the middle of all that hardship, music became his escape. Think about it, the powerful gospel hymns his mother sang, those were his first musical memories. Right there, the seed was planted. And then at 11 years old, this almost mystical moment happens. He walks into a community center, sees a piano, and bam, it was like someone flipped a switch. This wasn't just a hobby, you know, this was destiny calling. And as a teenager, his life basically became a soundtrack of pure hustle and talent. He's jamming with a young Ray Charles, mastering the trumpet. He even lands a scholarship to the prestigious Berklee College of Music. It's like every single step he took was preparing him for the musical revolution he was about to unleash. It really is incredible how music can be that lifeline, that escape route. And for Quincy, it's clear that it was his path to something so much bigger. You can practically hear those early influences in the music he'd later create, the Chicago blues and gospel sounds. It's all there. But what blows my mind is the sheer diversity of his career. We're talking jazz, pop film scores, this guy did it all. So how do you even begin to unpack a career that spans decades and crosses so many genres? Well, to really get it, you have to start with his early days as a jazz musician. He was arranging and playing for big bands, and that wasn't just about putting notes on a page, it was about shaping an entire soundscape. He was like an architect, deciding how the horns would blast, how the strings would soar, how every instrument would come together into this powerful, cohesive sound. And that's where Quincy's genius really shines through his ability to blend genres. He wasn't afraid to experiment, to take risks to create something totally new. Take his film scoring work, for example. The haunting melodies of In Cold Blood, the raw emotion he evoked in The Pawnbroker. It showed he could tell stories through music alone. Even his Emmy-winning score for Roots demonstrated his ability to capture history and human experience in a way that words just couldn't do. Okay, so we've got Quincy the musical chameleon, mastering everything from jazz to film scores. But then comes this absolutely pivotal moment, this collision of talent that completely changed pop music forever, his partnership with Michael Jackson. I mean, come on, off the wall, thriller, bad. These weren't just albums, they were cultural earthquakes. Take us inside that studio, that creative fusion. Break down how these two titans reshaped the sound of a generation. Well, the meeting of Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson was like a musical big bang. Think about it. You've got Michael, this young, incredibly gifted artist who's ready to break free from the Jackson 5 mold. And then you have Quincy, this seasoned producer who had worked with everyone from Sinatra to Count Basie. Talk about a meeting of the minds. Their first collaboration off the wall was like a taste of what was to come. You can hear the shift in Michael's vocals right away. They're front and center, full of emotion and power. And Quincy brings in these funky rhythms, disco elements, stuff that was totally fresh at the time. It was like the blueprint for Thriller, which wasn't just an album, it was a cultural phenomenon. It really is wild to think about Thriller as this global event, not just music. I mean, the videos, the dance moves, everyone was captivated. But let's zoom in on the music itself. What made Quincy's production so groundbreaking? Quincy was a master of blending genres. Listen to Beat It. You've got Eddie Van Halen shredding on guitar, but it's still undeniably funky and poppy. That was Quincy's genius, taking risks, creating something completely new. And it wasn't just about the sound, it was about the storytelling. He crafted each song like a mini movie with dynamic shifts, emotional peaks and valleys. Take Billie Jean. That bass line is iconic, instantly recognizable, but then you've got those layered harmonies, the driving beat, the way the tension builds and releases. It's pure magic. And he didn't just stop at Thriller, bad, continued their hot streak, proving that their creative synergy was a force to be reckoned with. Quincy pushed Malm. Michael vocally brought in cutting edge production techniques. It was pop music, but elevated to a whole new level. Okay, so we've established that Quincy Jones was this hit making machine, but there's another side to him, a side that goes beyond the charts and into the heart of social change. I'm talking about We Are The World, bringing together the biggest names in music for famine relief. That's a whole different kind of power. Tell me more about Quincy's role as a connector, a catalyst for good. We Are The World wasn't just a song, it was a movement. 
Imagine the logistics of getting all those egos in one room. Bruce Springsteen, Stevie Wonder, Cyndi Lauper, all singing for a cause. That was Quincy's magic, his ability to bring people together to inspire them to create something bigger than themselves. And this wasn't a one-time thing. His whole career is marked by collaborations that crossed genres and generations, from Dizzy Gillespie to Tupac Shakur, from Chaka Khan to Snoop Dogg. He saw the value in bridging those musical divides. And let's not forget, this was the 1960s, a time of immense social upheaval. Quincy was one of the first black executives at Mercury Records, breaking barriers and paving the way for countless others. He understood that music wasn't just about entertainment. It was a tool for social change, for amplifying voices that needed to be heard. It's inspiring how he used his success, not just to build his own career, but to lift others up, to create opportunities that didn't exist before. But let's be real, Quincy faced some serious hurdles along the way. In 1974, he's hit with a near-fatal brain aneurysm. Talk about a life-changing event, how did he bounce back from that? That aneurysm could have ended everything. But Quincy's a fighter. It made him reevaluate his life, his priorities. He embraced a healthier lifestyle and emerged with this even stronger sense of purpose. He said it gave him a criminal level of optimism. And you hear that in his music and his work ethic. Nothing could stop him. And yes, there were setbacks, especially in Hollywood, where his film ambitions didn't always pan out. But Quincy never let those disappointments define him. He kept creating, kept innovating, always looking ahead to the next challenge. It's that resilience, that unwavering belief in himself that's so remarkable. He never lost sight of the joy, the power of music, mm. even when life threw him curveballs. So let's shift gears a bit. We've talked about the music, the collaborations, the social impact. But what about Quincy the man, the husband, the father? His personal life was certainly complex with multiple marriages, seven children. Did those experiences influence his music? Quincy was a man who lived life to the fullest, and that included his personal relationships. His marriages might not have all lasted, but he was deeply devoted to his children. Fatherhood was a major part of his life, even with his demanding career. And you can't separate the man from the music, his experiences with love, lost family, all those emotions found their way into his work. It's what gave his music that depth, that human connection. It wasn't just notes on a page. It was life poured into sound. It's that personal touch, that blend of joy and heartache that makes his music so relatable, so timeless. But I'm curious, amidst all the fame, the success, what were his guiding principles? What made Quincy Jones tick? Quincy was a deeply spiritual man. He was raised Baptist, but throughout his life, he explored different faiths and philosophies. It wasn't about dogma for him. It was about seeking wisdom, meaning, and connection. He believed in the power of love, compassion, and forgiveness. He saw the beauty in diversity in different cultures and perspectives. And he had this unshakable optimism about humanity, about the world. He truly believed in the power of music to heal, to unite, and to inspire. You know, when you, when you look at the arc of his career, it's almost like he was on a mission to prove that music could break down any barrier and he did it with such style, such grace. But I'm curious, all his achievements, all the accolades, Yeah. what would you say is Quincy Jones's most enduring legacy? His legacy is multifaceted like the man himself. He revolutionized music production, broke racial barriers in the entertainment industry, and used his platform to champion social change. But beyond all that, he showed us the power of collaboration, of bringing people together from different backgrounds, different genres, to create something truly special. He was a master at finding and nurturing talent. He wasn't afraid to take risks to push boundaries, and he inspired countless others to do the same. It's amazing to think about the ripple effect of his work. It's not just the music itself. It's the inspiration he ignited in countless artists, producers, and music lovers. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive. I don't know about you, but I'm walking away with a renewed appreciation for Quincy Jones, not just as a musical genius, but as a human being who lived his life with purpose, passion, and an unwavering belief in the power of music to make the world a better place. What a journey. He was a true original, a force of nature, and his legacy will continue to inspire and uplift for generations to come. And on that note, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the extraordinary life of Quincy Jones. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep the music playing.